Hello makers and welcome back to the studio. Now today I want to do something that's really a lot of fun. We're going to be working with what I call paint swiping. Well, it doesn't have anything to do with stealing other people's paint. It has to do with using our paints to swipe them across a piece of paper and make kind of a smear. I'm going to show you. We're going to make some controlled smears as it were. But to begin with, let's talk about the tools we're going to be using today. I'm going to be using my rotary cutter here to cut a piece of paper into smaller pieces that I can work on. Uh, I'm going to need, of course, my ruler to help me figure out how to uh, make all that happen. Um, I'm going to use this tool, which is basically just a spatula. It's a thin piece of plastic, uh, quite literally used for automotive body work. It's for putting uh, filler into car bodies, things that are rusted out if you want to repair. That's yeah. So do all your do all your art shopping at the auto body store, I say. Uh, and then finally, we're going to have an assortment of different paints. I've created a bit of a spectrum here more of a polychromatic approach here, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna use this. But the first thing we need to do is I wanna create some smaller pieces of paper for my large piece of, uh, this is a, a heavy watercolor paper, and uh, my go-to, and I'll have the link down below for all of the tools here if you're interested in following along at home. And what I wanna do is I wanna basically create six squares that are gonna be six inches each. So in order to do this, uh, first of all, let me just get a sense of how many I can get if I go across here. So six and 12 and 18. I can actually three if I, if I trim it beautifully. We'll get it close, we'll get it close. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my, uh, my ruler in here and that will give me, this is six inches automatically and then I get three roughly six inch pieces. If they're slightly off, we're not gonna, we're not gonna weep openly here. Let's just move that over there a little bit. Yeah, super close, super close. And let me cut that. Using my rotary cutter. There we go. Looks like we got one little thing that's sticking on here. There we go. Okay. So there we go. There's one piece to start with. Let me do the same thing again here. And again, let me just get my ruler lined up where it needs to be here. And right the point, beautiful. And again, this will get us three more pieces if we need it. And you know, while I'm here, since uh, I don't have any master plans for this other piece of paper, I'm gonna do it one more time. I'll have some backup pieces. Because invariably when you're working on any kind of project, especially if you're experimenting, and oftentimes we are, uh, not everything goes according to plan. So I might actually say, okay, I'm gonna, create these six pieces, but what if one of them doesn't turn out the way I like it, right? There's always a possibility that one's gonna be like, eh, it's gonna be weak. And so I'm gonna come in here. And I'm gonna cut that, and I'll leave this uh, scrap for some other project in the future. Okay, so now that I have these pieces, what I can do, uh, make it very easy for myself, is just stack them up like this. And now if I were to come in here, and uh, just measure six inches. Again, the beautiful thing about having a ruler that's six inches wide makes it super easy to, uh, to get that done. Let me make sure I have this squared up though. It looks like I'm off a little bit. There we go. That's better. And let me just cut all three at the same time. Might need to make more than one pass. Okay. Well, looks like we're almost done there. We can trim things up a little bit in the future as we if we need to. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna come in here and let me do that one more time. Get that lined up there. And again, be careful with these, these rotary cutters. They're uh, magnificently sharp, which is why we're using them. They're, they're, they're wonderfully sharp. That's what we wanna have happen. Oh, looks like I kinda lost what I was doing there, so. Let's cut the last one here by itself. Sometimes the paper, when you're doing a, a stack of things, sometimes the paper on the bottom can shift a little bit. So you wanna keep an eye on that. All right, cool. So now I have nine pieces of paper that I can work with for the purposes of what we're doing. You know, Now, what am I doing with these? Well, I wanna use these as the foundation for the project we're working on. And these are gonna be individual squares that are gonna be painted. And again, I might square these up a little bit. Let me just make sure that everything looks as good as I want it to. Some of these are a little bit off, I notice. All right, that's not so bad. What I wanna be able to do with this 
is I want to be able to, first of all, decide if there's an area of this that I don't want paint to get on. And the answer is, yeah, I'm going to create a boundary here, a border on each one of these where I don't want my paint to be. I'm going to create a natural white border. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to use my good friend Scotch brand magic tape. Yep, the same tape we use for wrapping gifts. What I want to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to lay down some, uh, some tape lines, if you will. And this is really, uh, in my experience, the best masking tape when working on paper. I'm going to come in here and let's just get it laid out there. Good. On that line. And let's do the same thing for the other sides here. Try to get that covered best we can. Eyeball that. Make sure we're in there. And then finally... A little bit longer, a little bit longer. Let's make sure it's working over here as well. Now I have pretty much ended up uh, taping myself to the uh, to the my cutting board here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply come in here and grab a pair of scissors and just do a quick cleanup on this. A quick cleanup. Just get rid of this tape edges since I'm not going to need them, and I don't want this necessarily sticking to my cutting mat or anything else while I'm working on it. And this tape is all coming off later, so it doesn't matter if we're, you know, super precise here or not. It's just cleaning things up to make it a little bit easier to work with. Beautiful. Okay, so there's our piece. Now, I'm going to do the same thing to the other pieces I have, the other eight pieces. I want to mask those up just to make sure I have what I need. And uh, instead of you watching me do that, because I know it sounds like a lot of fun, doesn't it? But uh, trust me, it's, it's okay. We're going to fast forward to that part. I'll be back in just a moment with those uh, being all finished. Three days later. Okay, so at long last, everything is masked up. I know you can't really tell because it's invisible tape, but uh, it is. I have six pieces that I've selected here, which will be the foundation for the project I'm working on. I have a few in the back if I need to, uh, if I make any mistakes and need to change anything. But what I want to do now is start planning a little bit about what I want these different sheets to look like because it's a blank canvas. We can do whatever we want with it. And what I'm thinking is I want to be able to introduce four colors that I'm going to work with with each one of these squares out of the six colors that I have. So here we go. Here are my six colors. I'm doing something very polychromatic. And what I want to be able to do to start with is really lay down some foundational colors. Like let's start with an orange here. I'll use that as my first color. And it's not going to end up on all of my squares perhaps, but we'll, uh, we'll see how it works here. And what I want to do, let me uh, get a paintbrush here. One sec. So what I'm going to do here, I'm, by the way, I'm going to use a, uh, a sacrificial piece of paper. I have some copier paper. I don't, I'm not going to cry about it if it gets paint on it. It's just a lot easier than getting a lot of paint on my cutting mat because then I have to spend a fair amount of time cleaning paint off of that later, which I'm going to try to avoid doing. Nothing like the, the smell of a new can of paint. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I am going to get some paint on my brush and I'm going to go to the top of the area that I've already masked off. I'm basically painting right on the scotch tape up here. Just get a line there. And what I want to do now is I want to take basically my spreader, which is this guy right here. And again, it doesn't have to be this. You can use a squeegee. You can use a putty knife. You can use a thin piece of plastic, whatever you have lying around. But it's going to it's best if it's a nice straight edge here and something that can be pretty tight down. Because what I'm going to do now, I'm actually just add a little bit more paint to my reservoir up here. I'm going to just drop a little bit more. Is I want to take that paint and I want to smear it. I want to spread it down this piece of paper like this. All right, so put this in place and then I am going to go and do this. Okay, so what I've done, you can see now where the uh, where the scotch tape is. But I've laid down this color, this orange, so it's going to be this kind of somewhat translucent. It's letting a lot of the texture of the paper through as well. You know, that's really what I'm looking to do. And since I, I'm already working with orange here, you know what, I'm going to kind of keep things going. Let me grab my next one. Maybe I'll put the orange in the middle on this one. We'll just mix it up a little bit. And I'll put some right there. And we'll get some yeah, that'll give us some good color. Depends on how wide we want the line to be. By the way, I'm going to employ a, a paper towel from time to time just to wipe off the previous paint so we don't end up getting anything smeared 
that we don't want to get smeared. And let me just get a little bit more up here so I have some paint to carry down through. And this will be a center line. And by the way, I might put a slight curve on it because, you know, I can. And I'm going to come in here like this and do something like that. All right, you see how that works out? So there we are. We have a couple different pieces that we're able to work on now. And uh, I'm going to do that to two more. I'm going to add orange to two more of my six pieces. And again, I don't want to get paint on anything that's my scratch page is doing. Uh, this one, let's, uh, we'll have it be over here on the left-hand side this time. And we'll see how that works out for us. And let me just grab this and let's swipe. And I'm going to kind of make the line a little bit shorter. And by the way, sometimes you run into a situation like we have right here where it's, uh, it's left some gap. We ran out of paint. So I'm just going to put a little bit of paint north of here. And let me just come in here and let me spread it around. Now, I should have wiped my, my scraper off before I did that because I did put an additional paint there. But that might actually lead to uh, some a different uh, design. All right, so maybe that will work out for us. You never know. Sometimes you have these happy accidents when you're painting things out. All right, let me uh, get a couple more of these. Let me get another piece of paper under here to sacrifice. And uh, let's get orange one more time. You know what? I'm going to put it. Uh, I want to put down the middle again. I'm going to make this one a little bit thinner just by starting off thin. It may start off a little bit thin here and get thicker as it goes over time. Let me make sure I have enough paint up here. Good stuff. And again, I'm going to kind of go straight down this time. There we go. So it's a thinner orange line as a result. And I think that'll be good for what we need to do with our orange color. So let me just, again, wipe my tools off here. I don't spread paint around. I don't want to spread around. And let me get my paintbrush washed. And uh, let's do, talk about the next color we want to put in here. And again, there's no right answers uh, on how we do any of this. Let me drop some red in here because I think the red will have a good relationship with the orange. Again, these are all nice bright colors. That's the goal here. Anyway, we have the red hot chili pepper paint here. By the way, this is I'm using Mondo Llama paint. This paint can be found at Target. Yeah, if you go to Target and look around. You can find they sell Mondo Llama there. It is their brand. And I, I like the colors. I like the little uh, pots they come in. And uh, I like how it works. It's, it's not a bad paint at all. I'm going to come in here. You know what? I'm going to keep the piece I just worked on. And let's add some red. We'll put it over here on the right-hand side of this. And again, I'm going to drop some paint up here. Make, a, make it enough so that if it gets spread down, it will reach all the way to the bottom. And I'm going to go grab my tool again. And uh, let's get spreading. And this one I'm going to kind of bring down. Again, make sure I get enough paint to fill in everything in between. Right. And I got, I got a little bit of line of red here. I mean, of white, I should say, right in here. And I'm going to try to see if I can fill it in. Let me just wipe this off. And let me see if I can make that happen if I come down here like this. There we go. Kind of, I don't want the white showing through. It's going to, it's going to really pop. So you're going to be able to see it like, whoop, that looks like a mistake. Because it was. It was a mistake. But we'll get that one there. Um, but, 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 do I want to put red under the other ones? Yeah, you know what? Let me, uh, let me do that to this one here as well. I'm going to put some red on this one. I'll put it over here on the right-hand side, at least the way I'm looking at it right now. And bring that down. And maybe we'll swing it out a little bit, make it a little bit wider at the bottom. Again, we can play around with the different shapes. It's really about a combination of these different colors and shapes at the end of the day. And let me do the same thing. I'm going to put red on one of my untouched pieces here as well. Uh, let's say red down the middle. Okay. And let's get that scraped. Perfect. Wipe that guy off. And uh, I have one more. You know what? I think I'll put red on this piece here. And I'll do it in the middle again. I'm going to do it really kind of thin. Thin line. Like that, that thin. And let's see how that works for us. Okay.
Got a little bit, just a tiny bit of white showing through because those lines didn't mesh perfectly. I just want to see if I can bring this in and just clean that up a little bit. And I did. All right, that looks better. That looks better. All right, and we've put uh, red on four of the things. I think that'll be our magic number. All right, let's add a green next. I have this uh, lush grass color and see how we can fit that in with what we're doing. And again, let me get this. All right, and uh, now that we have our green here, let's, uh, I'm gonna put uh, the line of green right here. Get my brush dried, if nothing else. There we, there we go. And uh, let's add some green right up here. Put a green line on this one. And that'll be cool. Might need just a tad more, just to make sure we have enough to spread. All right, perfect. Let's grab our spreader and let's uh, let's work that paint down. It looks awesome. And one of the things that's also very cool here, you can notice when we have the overlapping of colors. So our green and our red are overlapping here a little bit, and of course it brings in a, a, a secondary color, something that we can work with. So we have three colors on that one. Uh, again, let's just add uh, the green to four of these. Um, I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna put it on this one here. Let's put it over here on the right-hand side. So da, 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 da. get some more in there. Da, 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 da. Good stuff, that should be enough. If it's not, we can come back and add some more. Okay, looks like we got, again, we got a little bit of white showing up here. I'm going to just use what's on my scraper to try to fill that in. A little texture, a little change of color, actually, it adds some character to this whole thing. So, not terrible. So, don't worry about doing it wrong, because there's no right way to do it. And uh, let me get some green on this one here. Uh, I'm going to put it down the middle. This will be down the middle on this one here. My last untouched color. There we go. And let's get a green swipe in the middle. Oh, well, that's going to be cool. It's uh, got a little bit of a starting at the top and kind of keystoning as it went down. All right, cool. All right, three of those, and uh, duh, 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 duh. let me uh, let me put it on this one here. I'm gonna just put the green on kind of this narrow band. You may not be able to see it, but the orange kind of took up a lot of the real estate over here. So I'm gonna just drop some green in here, and we'll move that down. Oh, looks like we did definitely didn't have enough paint to do that. So I'm gonna drop some right in here. And that will give us some more to work with as we bring her down. Beautiful. All right. So we have green in there. And that's it. I have four with green. I think we're done with that. Let's uh, let's move in. Let me get some, some cleansing of my brush here and get the green put away. And I'm going to grab the pool party blue here. Pool party. And I'm going to work with the uh, the blue here. You know what? I'm going to use this one. This blue being a darker color here, it might give me a little bit of coverage on that orange. We'll see what that looks like. It might actually turn out be, to be very interesting. Again, sometimes you just make happy accidents when you're creating art, depending on what's going on here. And uh, maybe a little tiny bit more. Just feeling like we need more coverage. Okay. And let's get our scraper, and I'm going to bring this right down and fill in that kind of center white space. All right. And, of course, we can see now that it's covered up uh, the orange a little bit, not to obscure it, but it's there. We'll, we can play around with this. We still have options available to us. So there is one. Let's, uh, let's do blue down the side here. I'll put it down the right-hand side. All right, let's get this swiped down as well, and beautiful. 
It is a thing of beauty. All right, so there is another blue. These are a little light. We could certainly uh, make them uh, darker colors if we wanted to. The, uh, the option is up to us. And let's see what I want to do here. Let's put some blue on this guy here. I'll put it on the left-hand side this time. Right in there. And add a little bit more. That covered up nicely, nicely, nicely. Okay, and uh, last one, you know what? Let's come in here. And what I wanna do after I have the, the three colors down is I wanna turn the paper around here. And again, let me make sure everything's dry enough so I don't end up blending. It looks like it's actually okay there. And let's uh, let's do a blue kind of streak going this way and we'll, uh, we'll make this a lot more interesting. So I'm gonna put some blue right up here. There you go. That's why I'm starting also with my lighter colors as being the foundation, because I find the darker colors can, uh, can do a better job of covering things once we have them. So we don't cover it up totally, but let's come in here. And again, I'm going to do kind of a swoop. There we go. It's a little subtle. This blue is definitely a little, a little more subtle than I was thinking. But again, we can hit this with another color if we need to. All right, so we've got some blue in there. Nicely done. Uh, let me get my paint brush clean, and uh, I'm going to move on to the yellow color. I'll lay that as, down as a foundation, as foundational color as well. All right, and uh, let's turn this piece of paper over so we don't make a, a heck of a mess. All right, and sometimes it's really just a good idea when you're working with paints that have been sitting around for a while, just give them a good shake before you get started. Because a lot of times what will happen is the pigment will settle down to the bottom of the container and you get a lot of binder on the top, which is more translucent or transparent. And then down at the bottom, you have all the, all the color and that's not what you want. Especially with a color like yellow, which can be uh, has a tendency to be kind of translucent. Let's move this and say, all right, down, 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 down. Oh, that yellow looks really nice. It's actually popping through beautifully. So that's a that's a good looking color, definitely, definitely. All right, I'm gonna do something uh, similar here. Let's get some yellow at the top. Get that moved down. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm gonna take this piece here and let's just drop some yellow across the middle of it. Again, similar type of thing. I'm gonna create a little bit of a, a swoop here. What's gonna really make this work, of course, when all these pieces are being combined in one place is you're gonna have similar colors, but really kind of different layouts. So, and let's do that like this. Oh, good. Yeah, you can see, of course, the yellow really making secondary colors a little bit more of an orange color when it goes over the red. But it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. All right, one more yellow to do here. And you know what? I'm going to put it right here on this piece in a big area that needs uh, some fill. And get that right there like that. Let's get that swiped down all like that. Beautiful. Okay. So we have four uh, examples of the yellow in here, and that really leaves us with one more color to work with, and that's this purple color, which I think is going to be a good covering color. Get a new piece of scratch paper in here. Let's get the yellow capped. Let's get this purple out here again. I'm shake it up, shake it up, baby. I may have not mentioned that, you know, one of the go-to tools in, in any studio is a roll of paper towels. There's, there's always a need to clean something up, so it's not a bad thing to have on hand. All right, let's take this piece here. I'm going to get some purple on this one here. 
This is honeyed fig. Honeyed fig. I'm not sure I know what a honeyed fig is, but uh, let's assume that it's kind of a purple color like this. More of an aubergine. I guess aubergine would be a little redder than this. Your eggplant color. All right, looks pretty good. Let's get a swipe on this going through the middle of all the other stuff we've done. Okay, look at that. That looks darn good. All right, so we have a couple pieces that are actually completed. I'll put them over here. And I'm going to do the same thing with the, the purple on here again. Let's make sure, you know, sometimes a little patience is good. That yellow is still a little, little wet. I'm not going to toy with it just yet. I'm going to try to come across this, this uh, orange block here, this kind of mistake that I made to see if I can just make it more interesting. And I'm going to kind of start over here on the left hand, uh, right hand side, I should say, and move it toward the left. Let's see if we can sweep this. So let's come up here and through here like this and down here like this. I think that we may have just saved the day and that extra bit of color is just going to be a really cool bit of texture that is shining through. All right. Uh, what do we have? We have two more that we want to swipe some purple onto. Let me just... Uh, a little bit easier not to get paint on everything. And we'll get some purple up here. I'm going to run through the middle on this one. Beautiful. Let's get some swiping going here. And uh, by the way, I'm seeing kind of a, I've made a bit of a line with the paint and I don't want that to be the case because that line is going to show up. So I'm going to just come in here and just try to scrape it away a little bit. There, looks a little bit better. Looks a little bit better. And by the way, when we when we take the uh, tape off of these and we can see them fully unmasked, they're going to just, it's amazing how well they pop. Your brain's just going to like, oh my gosh, that's really amazing how good that looks. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do kind of a swoop here. These are mostly straight lines. And if we put a swoop in here, it just makes it a little bit more interesting visually. Kind of do one of these. All righty. So wipe this off. Okay, so now let me pull this out of the way and kind of share with you what uh, what we have here. I'll put my purple away since don't need that anymore. Painting my face. All right. So there we go. So I'm going to give these a few minutes to dry. And then let's get that uh, masking off and see what we have. And that will give us the elements we need for the next step of this piece. So come on back in a sec and I'll have this ready to go. Several months later. Okay, and uh, magically, uh, everything is dried. It's enough, uh, enough time to also clean up a little bit and go wash your hands so you don't end up getting paint on everything else you're trying to touch. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to get this masking off. So let me just grab a piece here. And sometimes if you... Grab the edge here, you can actually start to take all the tape off at the same time, like this here. There we go. And uh, again, you want to be slow. The uh, The magic tape does a really good job of not adhering to the paper and peeling it off, but you also want to go slow, because sometimes, you can see right there, I'm getting a little tiny bit of paper pull out. Sometimes along the edge, that can be a, a bit of a problem. Try to make that so it's less visible. There we go. So we'll get that off there. One more piece of tape to pull off the edge here. And again, there we go. It's usually when it catches the edge. But now you can see the difference. Look at how cool that looks with the masking taken off, right? With this tape removed, we get these really clean white lines around it. And we also see how well this magic tape does it masking the paper. It's really a great, one of the best solutions and it's super affordable, right? Compared to a lot of the tape on the market that people spend Lots of money on to have the best solution. It turns out the uh, sometimes the, the most humble solution is the one that works best. So let's get this pulled up here. And again, just get this tape. Sometimes you need to get a fingernail under there to get it found. And we've got a little bit of spill over here on the margin, but we can trim these down a little bit. But again, I'm going to finish the rest of these, and uh, then we'll talk about what to do with the next uh, with these in the next step.
Okay. So there we are. We uh, we have our six pieces. And once again, once you take the tape off, uh, it really just changes the whole dynamic. They go from being kind of like paint that got smeared on a piece of paper to something that looks like it was uh, planned out because, well, it, it was planned out. Now, the next thing we want to do is think about how we might assemble these. I want to create a, a final piece in which each one of these is going to be a component in that piece. So I need to think about basically how to place them and how what want this to look like. And I'm going to start with a another piece of this uh, heavy duty watercolor paper. Let me slide this underneath here. Move these out of the way for a second. And this will be the piece we want to be able to work with. And what I'm thinking is I want to be able to put these squares in here and figure out what order, what orientation, what's going to look best. No answer here, no right answer, but uh, probably some better answers. Now, a couple of these things also, I'm seeing like I have a little bit of purple that spilled out on this side. I have a little bit of red. So I may actually take a moment and just use my straight edge and just trip off anything that is a little bit out of whack here. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to use a smaller quilting ruler here, just make it easier to kind of square this up on the edge. There we go. Just trim off any of the color that might detract from what we're trying to do. There we are. That looks, that looks better. That looks better already. I have another one here that's got a little bit of spillover of the red and the green on this side. So. It is all better. So now it's just a matter of really just, you know, deciding how do I want these to look? Do I want to balance the colors? So for example, I have, you know, the reds. Maybe I'll put a, a red color up here. So I have a red there, red there, red there. Don't want to make it too lopsided with too many colors and of the same in one place. Maybe my swoops, I can start to play with the swoops. Like maybe it swoops this way, it swoops that way, and maybe maybe this one swoops up again. And you know, there's there's no right way to do that. We do have a bunch of uh, the purple swoops in here. Looks like we have more than we. Oh, that's a blue swoop. And uh, you know, does it follow kind of a flow? What does that look like? Do we make all the swoops go sideways? Do some of them go up and down? I don't know the answers to these things. This is why we're we're kind of experimenting. A lot of times, it's just you know, it's just turning things in around in front of you until your brain goes, ooh, ooh, that's the one. It's like, uh, you know, trying to figure out where to put the sofa in a living room. Like you just keep moving it around a little bit until you go, yeah, right there. That's perfect. That is perfect. Okay. And so anyway, an opportunity for us to kind of decide what's going to look best. And uh, I don't hate this here. Now, is that the same as loving it? Well, sometimes it starts off with a, I don't hate it. And you work your way towards loving it. And again, do I want to create some sort of a... Uh, you know, a swoop on the curves, is that kind of a fun thing to do? Actually, visually, it kind of is. It kind of is. These are all going kind of side to side. These are all going up and down. And that may just be what we do here. We kind of have a relationship between the green there and the green there. Uh, do I want to play around with... Let me turn this another way. So it's... There we go. Now, again, when we look at this as a composite, right, as we pull all these pieces together, our eyes are going to see this purple line kind of going across various things. And just what I do with that to balance things out is really up to me. But I'm pretty happy with what I'm going to do here. Now, one of the things I need to think about with the piece, the piece of paper that I want to put these on is, first of all, how much distance do I want between the edges and, and each of the pieces here. So it makes a certain amount of sense to grab my trusty ruler and do a little bit of pre-planning here. So for example, if I come in here and say, right, um, each one of these pieces is six inches. So that's 12 inches there roughly. And they're covering 18 inches, which means that we have an additional six inches. So if I say, all right, if I put three inches at the bottom and two inches at the top and an inch between, will that work? And that may, that may be what we do here. And I'm thinking I kind of like to have it a little bit more white space at the bottom. It gives me a place to put a signature as well as um, just it balances things a little bit differently. So I'm going to do that. Let me push these guys up here for a second. 
And I'm going to come to my piece of paper. And uh, one of the things I love about working with these transparent rulers is that you can come in here and figure out how far three inches are, is from the bottom very easily. I'm going to come in here and just drag a, a light line. I don't want it to be anything super permanent because I'm going to have to come back and erase it a little bit later. But what this allows me to do now is have a sense of where I want to align the bottoms of these when they come into play here. Okay. Now, I also may say, all right, so going side to side, we're dealing with a total of 18 inches, roughly, depending on how we trim this. Working with 24, so again, we have some, uh, some space in between. And do I, let's see, if I come in two inches on this side, will that be enough? Or do I want to make it two and a half? Two and a half. If I do it two and a half, two and a half, then I have, then I, have I want to have an inch between. So I'm going to do two on either side. And that gives me two inches left over to play with, and that will give us an inch between each one of these. All right, so that on that side. And by the way, while I'm here, while I'm here, I'm not gonna need this rag edge, obviously, on the, uh, on the paper here. So I'm gonna get in here and grab my rotary cutter, and let's just square this up. There we go. Don't need that. So let's come in now from the side. And we're going to square this in again at two inches from the edge. And finally, uh, down here at the bottom, or now what will be the top, I'm going to bring it in two inches as well. So three inches at the bottom, two inches at the top. That'll give us a, a, just a slightly off symmetrical balance, which just really works visually. All right, so in this arena now, within the confines of what we have here, and again, I probably should have marked what I was doing here. Um, <laughs> so I think that's going there. I think that's going over here. Yellow in the middle there. And Oh, I'm noticing, you probably can't see this, but if you can, there's a little bit of green on the edge here. And again, this is one of those things when you finally get it up on the board and you look at it and you're like, oh, why didn't I see that before? I could have trimmed that out. Well, I had a chance. Because once you paste it down, that becomes much, much harder. And again, I need to get a little bit, a little bit more. Did not get all of it. All right. There we go. No regrets. No regrets. So, and again, I can uh, I can take a moment to say, do I have everything the way I want it here? All right. I think that's going to work. I think that's going to work. And the green to the green, and you know, again, the relationship these colors have with one another. Maybe put the yellow closer to the yellow. So you're green to green, yellow to yellow. Your eye will kind of play games and start to snap these things together, kind of play with the colors, orange and orange. All right, I think we're in pretty good shape here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna take out my first corner, and this will be the right-hand corner. It doesn't really matter where you start, but I wanna work with something that allow me to square this up. And I'm gonna grab my trusty glue stick here, and let me just use one of my previous paint guides, and I'm gonna use this as uh, just a, a place to allow me to uh, severely adhere the back of this thing because we don't want this thing coming up. So I'm just making sure you guys can see what I'm doing. And I am going to get a lot of glue on this guy. Get all the edges and then let's get in here as well. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, and again, we don't want to get too much extraneous glue. And if we do, we can wipe it off. It's all, it's all good. But now let's get this positioned where we want to put it. And I believe in this case, we can have it going like this. And I'm going to come over here. I'm going to get on the line. And I might ride the line a little tiny bit. Maybe cover it up just a little bit. And we don't have to worry about um, erasing it, frankly. If it's covered, it makes it easier to uh, to obscure it. I'm going to come in here, by the way, just since I, I really did get a lot of glue on stuff. I'm just going to 
and start wiping some of the excess glue off. Once this dries, it is totally transparent, so it won't be an issue. And I can come back in here. But I just want to make sure I have that. And I'm going to grab one more tool. I'm going to use my platen roller. Again, this is a printmaking tool, but allows us to transfer ink. But it's really good for pressing down pieces of paper that you uh, that you want to have stuck down. You probably could use a little oil. That's what it's telling me. Oil king! But there we go. So that is in good shape. I'm just going to wipe these edges here. Let's get some of that glue spill out. Taken care of. We'll come back and we'll do a little polishing if we need to. But that looks great. So it's coming in. Per, working perfectly, perfectly with those lines. Let's do the same thing. Um, we'll do the other corner. And by the way, maybe it's easiest just to rotate the piece the entire way and uh, work on my upper and lower corners, however we want to do that. we we'll do the same thing over here. By a millimeter. We, we don't care. We really don't. Get a paper towel in here just to get some this glue taken out. Once that dries, it's going to be a thing of beauty. All right. Now again, you may end up with a little bit of lift at the bottom here. You know, depending on what's going on. So going back on your on your lines and being able to push them down is good. Now, if that's not working for you, there are the um, uh, the, the PVA glues, so like Elmer's glue, the polyvinyl acetate glues, and you get a little bit of a glue pen, and sometimes you can kind of just go under that little bit of the edge and then stick it down. So if the uh, if the glue stick didn't didn't do full adhesion for you, you might need to play around with that a little bit more. The last thing I want to do is I want to get rid of my, my pencil lines here. Just get this all cleaned up a little bit. So again, visually, it's going to look very good to me. I'm uh, using my Prismacolor Magic Rub Eraser, which is just a really affordable art eraser, but it makes it really easy to, to come in here. Now, I will mention one thing. Uh, again, there's a, there's a lot to be learned from anything that we do, but there are times when I'm going to go to erase my line, like down here. I don't know if you can see, but I'm trying to erase this line, and it's like, yeah, no. And the reason for that is there's glue on it. So sometimes what I need to do is I'm going to need to take a paper towel I'm going to need to go in here and just get the glue out of there. Let it dry. You don't want to go in and erase it while the paper's wet. That's never a good idea. And then uh, it will allow you to get that pencil line up. So I may have to do that. And I'm going to come over here. Let's get those out of here. These are all coming up beautifully. Okay, let's get the pencil line best we can on the side. Sometimes we need to work on that line that's right underneath the edge of the paper. If we didn't cover it perfectly, it would be a little sticking out there. That's why I like to go and light on the line to begin with. Just give me a, a guide to work with because I want to be just making it a lot easier for myself on the other side when I'm getting rid of all that. All right, get rid of those eraser crumbs. And again, I gotta, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to wash this. That's what I'm gonna have to do right here. Let's see if I am. Use this little bit of water in here. And... Oh, there you go. Actually, sometimes you do that. It. Uh... I'm gonna put the pencil line down. Let's get that right there. Beautiful. A little bit of glue. Oh, all better. All better. And again, unless somebody's got their face pressed right up to this, they're probably not going to see any of that anyway. I'll glue that down a little bit, a little bit further. Maybe using some of my PVA glue. But you know what? 
we did it. Uh, it it looks pretty darn good. And again, uh, what we end up doing with this piece is entirely up to us. Now, I think this is a fun piece. Um, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in the gallery. I think I'm gonna put this in the gallery. We'll see how it does. Again, I think there are a few things I would strengthen here. To be totally honest, I would like to have perhaps darker colors as my swoops on this. But I think sometimes subtlety works here. May not necessarily be how I do things because. It turns out sometimes, especially when it comes to colors, I am not subtle. But to being able to have something that really just does, you know, does a, a splash of color, something we can put up on a wall, and when we look at it, our brain's just like, ooh, you know, that's kind of nice. Look at that nice color there. So we'll get this up in the gallery. You guys can take a peek at it. And by the way, um, look for the discount code in the description. If anybody is interested in purchasing this piece, uh, I'll make it available to you for uh, a good price. That's what we're going to do here. Whoever gets to it first gets to it first. And that's how it's going to work. But we have successfully created our one hour masterpiece. All right. So our swipe, and I'll figure out a name for this and all that. I haven't come up with one just yet. But we'll get this uh, we'll get this prepped up and, uh, and ready to go. And... Uh, Hey, I hope you had a good time with this. The objective, of course, with art is it's it's a journey of exploration sometimes. It really is based upon this idea of what if. And a lot of times what we really do when we sit down in front of a blank sheet of paper is we ask ourselves the question, what if? And if I do this and I do this and I do this, sometimes it's what we call a learning experience. Sometimes at the end we say, yeah, not so much. But other times we can look at this and say, you know what? I think this turned out the way I wanted it to turn out. It's going to be a nice splash of color in a, in a room. It doesn't have to have any grand statement. It really is just something that allows us to have something visual that's really interesting to look at and colorful spot in, uh, in our lives. And it's fun to make and not so crazy hard either. So I hope you had a good time with this. By the way, please like this video. It really helps us to get this message in front of a lot of other people who might want to learn how to make abstract art themselves. And also, if you like what we're doing here, feel free to subscribe. We'd love to have you be part of our family, part of our community of people. We drop videos every single week and we'd love to be able to share them with you. Anyway, that's all I have today. And I really appreciate your time and attention. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next time.